but you can still relate to people. Someone brings up just a bunch of things, being without law, maybe you have a pastor, maybe you know someone, you know, whatever, you, could, you can relate to them, but you're not going to get involved in, in that, uh, you know, in their lawlessness. Uh, you know, in any case, verse number 23 here says, and this I do for the gospel's sake. Yeah, it is very pertinent to preaching the gospel. I do this for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. I'm doing all these things. Why? Because I want people to get saved. I want people to hear the gospel. And that's what we want. That's the whole goal. We're trying to get people saved. We're trying to win people to Christ. So we're going to do everything that we possibly can. We're going to be courteous. We're going to be respectful. We'll be that, remember that we're ambassadors for Christ. So we're not going to try to irritate people doing anything unless it's just strictly through the Word of God. But even when we give people the Word of God, we're going to try to do so in a way that we hope isn't going to irritate them. I'll give you an example of this. I, I was speaking with a holiness Pentecostal person last week. Now, people who are very religious, I know that they will get offended if you tell them, I don't think you're saved. So that is not the best way to start a conversation. Now, I'll tell you this. I ended the conversation by telling her, I don't think you're saved. And she got offended. And that ended the conversation. But it was appropriate. And it needed to be said because it was, it was true. And I can't leave someone thinking that they're just fine thinking that they're saved. But had I started the conversation off that way, I never would have gotten anywhere. But see, I was able to actually give her the gospel, explain eternal security, show her the Bible verses, let her think about that first before finally getting to the point to where it had to be done because she wasn't receiving this because of too much pride, which is the problem with most holiness people is they actually think that they're living these perfect lives. They actually believe that you could live this sinless perfect, perfection life. Now, I want to start off being very tactful and polite. And you know what? Even when I told her that, I wasn't rude or condescending about it. She got offended anyways, but I didn't just say, oh, you're just going to split hell wide open anyways, lady. I say, look, I even preface it with saying, I'm not here to try to offend you about this, but here's what the Bible says. And according to scripture, you don't believe it's eternal life and you're not believing the record that God gave of his son and this is what you have to believe in order to be saved. So I don't think you're saved because you're not believing it's eternal life. If you think you could lose it, then it's not eternal. You know, the, the, I didn't use those exact words. There's something similar to that, right? I mean, that's, that's a way that you can explain to someone that this is why. But you don't want to start off just being offensive to people, especially knowingly. You know something's going to set someone off. You know, you, there's no reason to do that. We're not, we're not there to just to upset people and offend them. Now, if the truth offends them, that's on them. But if you can get the gospel out there and try to get them to hear and try to reach them, because if, if I could have reached that lady with the truth, I don't have to tell her that she's unsaved if she realizes that, what I'm, that, that the gospel is right, that this is true. She'll come up to that conclusion on her own. She won't need me to tell her that she was unsaved if she actually can hear the gospel and realize, yeah, that's actually right. That's true. And you believe that, you'll, you know right away that what you believed before was wrong. 